we can use a similar trick if we want to emit from points. Uh, for example, if we were if we were creating a shower head of some kind, we might lay down a circle and make it into a polygonal circle, and each of the points here might constitute uh, one of the sort of jets of the of the uh, the shower. So let me just have a point swap here, and let's give this some velocity. In other words, just add an attribute here, uh, which gives it perhaps some velocity on the z direction. So that's going to create a v attribute with this value, and that's going to be useful in a minute. So with that selected like that, if I then emit particles from this object, we find that it produces this disk rather than just using the points. However, if we go in here and instead of build the SDF from geometry, we can use stamp points again, and we can see we get all of those points. And at the moment, Let's just lay that out. Uh, we can see that that just comes out using the velocity attribute that we set and falls down. So that's how to create a sort of spray jet or something like that, more or less, from the points. And you'll recall that you can set the sort of radius of these spray jets using, on this node here, the, the Create Surface Volume node, you can use the stamp distance here. If you increase this, these points get bigger. And decrease it, they get smaller. And finally, uh, just an example to show how to set up collisions between an animated object and a flip fluid. Uh, and I've got a flip fluid tank here set up. And then I've modeled a, a very basic boat shape. And the way to do this is to animate our boat. So let me just turn off the fluid tank. And we can see that this is just animated so that it moves. And that's unfortunately cooking the dot network. Let me just get out of that and put the display flag here on the transform. So this is animated so that it just moves across between one fra frame and one frame 1 and frame 48, I think it is. It's just animated to go across. And by importing this as static object, using this tool here, we set up this stop network here. And we can see that the boat is being solved using the static solver, but it will still reflect the animation, and that is colliding through this merge node with the flip fluid. So we can see that as we go through, this collides with the fluid and creates a wake as so. Now that's the basics of how, how you could set up a collision with a boat, or a collision between a fluid and a boat. In order to get that to look good, however, you're going to need to use spray, and you're going to need to render the surface of the water using something which takes account of, of that spray. And that's really quite an advanced topic. I'm not going to cover that today. So one of the things that is sometimes useful with flip fluids is to use the nodes available in the pop context to control your fluid. And in particular, if you want to manipulate a single part of the fluid or some part of the fluid that has a particular attribute on the particles, uh, then you will need to use a pop solver in order to do so. Now, in Houdini 11 and before, you've got a pop solver attached automatically by the shelf tool when you created a flip fluid. Uh, that isn't the case in Houdini uh, 12. You need to create your own pop solver. But first of all, let me just show you the scene that I've got set up here. So we've got two spheres, both emitting fluid. 
and I've coloured the fluid using the methods we looked at earlier and they're both part of a single uh, fluid simulation so of course by default uh, they two fluids fall down and here I've ensured that the flip box is closed so the fluids are just going to wash about there in the bottom like so. Uh, so how did I first of all make the boundaries closed? Uh, well here on the flip fluid object if you have a look at the initial data down here I just had closed boundaries and all of these boxes are ticked and that means that the the fluid particles will collide with the sides of the box. So what do I want to do if uh, I need to use a pop solver? Well, I can, excuse me, I can lay down a pop solver like so and I want to attach it uh, to the particle velocity input of our flip solver. That's because what the pop solver is going to do is update the velocity attribute on the particles in order to give them uh, some force, for example. Uh, so we can use the nodes in the pop solver to affect the velocity, and that will then be reflected in our simulation. Now, unfortunately, the pop solver, as you lay it down, doesn't come, da come out uh, set up to be used with the flip solver, so you need to make a couple of alterations. In general, I prefer not to use an external pop. You could set up a, a pop network independently and then point to it here. Alternatively, when this is turned off, you can just dive inside and create your pop network there. The other thing that you need to do is here on the collisions tab, you need to turn off handle collisions uh, because your flip solver is going to handle the collisions. You don't need the pop solver to do so. And then on the solver tab, where it says solve mode, you want to change that to velocity update. The other thing you need to do is give the pop solver a clue as to where your network starts. And by default, I think it's set out here somewhere under new particles. It's expecting a node called source1. So let's dive down inside. And that node just has to be a null. It doesn't have to be a source node. So let's call this source1. And now any nodes that I attach here are going to be used, are going to be evaluated against the particles in the fluid. And that's going to, the velocity that we give them is going to be reflected in the simulation. So for example, I could just lay down a force node. And let's make it a force which is going to ignore mass. And I'm going to give it, say, a force of 1 in the x direction. But actually, let's give it a scale of 10 or so. And what we will probably see now is that our fluids, as you can see, are being pushed towards the x direction and now going much further up this wall because of the force that we've added as part of the pop network here. One of the advantages of this pop network is that you can actually apply forces selectively to different particles. So let's show how to do that. And in fact, in this scene, I've set up the two sphere objects to have a different attribute. So we've got an attribute called do force, and it's set up with a value of 1 on these red particles, and it's not set up at all on these blue particles, which means uh, when these are combined in the simulation, uh, the blue particles again get the default value here, which is zero. So the red particles are going to have a value of one, uh, the blue particles a value of zero. So let me go down into my auto.network and into my pop solver. Uh, and what I can do here is set up a group. So let me do that. And I can leave this as the defaults. And down here, I'm going to enable a rule, and instead of this rule here, I'm going to use pop point, which is a way of accessing attributes on points. And then I need the point number, dollar pt, the name of the attribute, in this case, do force, and 
if it's going to be if it was a vector attribute we'd need to specify which component of the vector this is just a float attribute so we, we say zero and I'm going to say greater than zero so this is going to be a group of all of those points uh, which are emitted from this red ball here so if this has worked what we should see here is that we've got 14,000 points in total roughly half of them are in group one and what we can do now is apply the force just to that group now because we're in a pop solver context the group doesn't unfortunately come up in the selector here so I'm going to have to type that in manually uh, and let's instead of making this in the x direction let's make it in the y direction and we've got to compensate we're going to be competing against gravity here so let's give it something quite large say 30 and let's start it at frame 30 so this node the force node is only going to be active after frame 30 and all the particles in group 1 are going to be given this upwards force so let's have a look and see what that looks like so the fluid falls down hits the bottom of the container spreads out and then we get to frame 40 and we can see the red particles are being shot upwards and are hitting the top of our box but quite a lot of blue particles are going up with them and that is unfortunately one of the issues with uh, the pop solver used to update velocities which is uh, that if your fluid gets mixed up then of course the individual voxels on the flip solver are not going to distinguish between the red and the blue particles if you've got a voxel which contains a red and a blue particle uh, one of them has a force applied because of the way a flip solver works which is a voxel based calculation that same force will actually be applied to both of the particles that are in the voxel even if one of them isn't captured in the pop, in the pop solver so it's a slightly blunt instrument uh, you can't specify those red particles absolutely precisely but as you can see uh, you can create forces which more or less distinguish between one set of particles and another uh, and of course uh, you can also use the pop solver to use all of the nodes that you're familiar with from the particle context you can use those to shape and manipulate your flip fluid and that really does give you a lot of flexibility so let's look at now at some of the other tricks you can use using with flip fluids and I just want to demonstrate that you can in fact use uh, the tools that are here on the populate container shelf uh, apart obviously from the sourcing tools but these ones sync pump collide expand you can use with a flip fluid so uh, let's for example use an expand so I've got a, a flip fluid tank set up here this is just as the shelf tool has created it and I need to uh, have something that's going to be converted into a expand from object field so let's use the sphere so with that selected I can select the shelf tool it's then going to ask me to select the fluid which I'll do and press enter uh, and we can see that that's created a divergence field here from that sphere let's turn off the sphere so we don't need to see it and in our auto dot network here uh, we've got this source divergence being merged in here to the volume velocity tab and if if we uh, we probably want to increase the divergence quite a bit so we can scale it up here scale source volume so let me scale that up to seven or eight or something like that uh, but if we press play uh, we'll notice that nothing much happens uh, and that's unique to this divergence attribute that's because by default uh, there's no divergence field we need here on the flip tank or our flip fluid object to add the divergence field and in fact uh, let's just 
visualize particles and then visualize divergence and what we should see as we step through we should see there we are we can see that uh, divergence down the bottom there and as we pray through this you can see now that that fluid is being forced out from that divergent area now you can see the fluids growing and the reason for that is that we have here on the flip solver by default the reseed particles option enabled so we can turn that off and what we should see now is that actually the particles thin out here uh, where the field is divergent now the other shelf tools here pump and sink can also be used uh, actually I'm not sure sink can but pump can and that's useful for example for adding some velocity so let's just do that. Let's delete uh, this, go back here, go into our sphere, and excuse me, go into our sphere and just delete everything else apart from the original sphere. And now we can use this sphere to pump from object and now select fluid hit enter so now everything that's inside this object will have a velocity applied to it uh, let's for the sake of argument give ourselves a plane upward velocity of 40 and what we should see now is that this there we are is indeed being given an upwards velocity of 40, rather a large velocity, so the centre of the fluid is being forced up very rapidly. But that shows you how you can use these uh, shelf tools to affect the behaviour of your flip fluid simulation.